In this video, we're going to write code in Google Apps Script that allows us to run through an email contact list and send out personalized emails to each of the recipients in that list. So you can see here I have a small data set of email contacts. First column we have the email address, and then we have a column for the first name. We have a column for the class name or subject and then we have date and time columns. Over here to the right, I have a standard email template, and you can see in bold font, I have keywords such as name, subject, date, and time. And what we wanna do is loop through this list of contacts, get the first name, plug it into the name slot here in our template, do the same thing for our subject, and finally do the same thing for the date and time. We want to plug each of these date and times into these respective slots as we loop through our contact list. So the first thing we want to do is get into the app script editor window. You can do that by going to extensions and then app script. I still prefer the old editor so I'm going to X out of this. We're going to rename our project. We'll call this Mass Emails. We'll call our function the same thing. And we'll begin by declaring variables. So the first one is going to be called SS for spreadsheet. We want to get the spreadsheet application and then get active spreadsheet to get the active spreadsheet we're in now and then we want to get sheet by name the name of our sheet is called contact list the next variable is going to represent the range that contains all of this data here so that's a2 to f4 so we'll call this rng for range it's going to be equal to our spreadsheet variable and then we want to get range and a one notation and once we have that range we want to get the values from that range we're gonna have a variable that contains our template value here that contains our email message so that is a merge cell it's actually multiple cells but we can just simply reference the top most leftmost cell which is h2 so we'll call this variable template and it's going to be equal to our spreadsheet variable and then get range again h2 and it is a single cell, so we just want to get value singular. So <clears throat> before we build our loop to go through our list, what I want to do is log out our range variable so you can kind of see what that looks like. I think it will make more sense as we build our loop. So. We're just going to log this out. So I'm going to hit save here. We'll hit play. We'll have to authorize this script. So we'll click review permissions. Click on the Google account we're using. Go to advanced. Scroll down to the project name, mass emails. Scroll down again. Click allow. So now we'll view our log that should display everything that's stored in our range variable here might take a second for it to load here so you can see here is our entire data set of our contact list information and you can see it's a two-dimensional array you can see that by this double set of brackets so this outer set is a collection of rows and then the inner set has each row enclosed in a single set of brackets so there is our first row there is 
our second row and that is our third row. So what I want to do is just copy this data so you can kind of see it as we build our loop. And I'm going to break it out so we can kind of see each row. I think this will help everyone see visually what we're doing. So one thing I want to point out is that in this array variable, the count for our elements, which are rows and columns, begins at zero. So this first row here is row number zero. The second row is row number one. The third row is row two. Same holds true for each of the columns inside each row, which are separated by a comma. This first column is column zero. This is column one. This is column two. So these are just things to keep in mind as we create our loop. So what I'm going to do is add slashes in front of this to make this a comment so that our code does not pick this up. So now we're ready to create our for loop because what we want to do here is loop through each of these rows in our data set, extract the values we need such as first name, subject class, date, and time, plug them into our message here and eventually send out the email. So the for loop begins with the keyword for and then we specify a beginning point and an ending point because what a for loop does is it just repeats the same step over and over again based on a start and stop point that you specify so for our beginning point we're going to declare a counter variable called i and it's going to begin at a point of zero because our first row in our range array is zero Next, we define an ending point, or how long we want this loop to run for. Well, we want this loop to run so long as our counter variable is less than the length of our range. The length of our range variable is 3, and our last row value in our range array is 2. So that's how long we want it to run so long as it's less than the length of our range array. Finally, we have a definition for how much we want our counter variable to increment in. We just want it to increment in values of 1. So we state our counter variable and then plus plus. So after that, we add a set of curly brackets. And inside this set of curly brackets, are the actions we want to perform while this loop is running. So now what we want to do is create a final variable that will hold our final email message with all of the data elements from our range array plugged into our template. So we want to plug in the first name into the name slot here. We want to plug in the subject here and the date and time items from each row here and here. So we have a variable called final message. And it is going to be equal to our template variable. And we want to do multiple things here. So we're going to chain some items here. So we're going to use a method called replace and it's not in the help menu there so it doesn't populate but it has two arguments the item you want to replace and what you want to replace it with so the first thing we want to replace is name so we referenced our template variable and then in the replace method we mention our name in all upper cases what do we want to replace it with well from our range array variable we want to get to the row <coughs> we're on, which so we add two sets of brackets here. The first one is the row 
second set of brackets is the column. So for the row, we just want to reference our counter variable because this counter variable is going to loop through every single row in our array. For our column, we want to get to this column that contains the first name. So in each row, the first column is column zero, email. First name is column one. So that's a value of one. So we want to do a similar thing for all of those other keyword slots where we want to plug in data. So the next one is the class name or subject. I think it was keyword subject. Let's double check. Yeah, subject. So here, first name was in column one. This is column two, column three. So now we have the date. So that was keyword date. That was right after the subject column. So that's column four. And we also want to format this date because right now this is what that looks like. We don't want that. We want a short date. So we're going to use something called utilities. And it has an option to format a date. So the first input is the date we want to format. So what I'm going to do is cut what we have here because we're going to input it here. But it also needs to begin with keyword new and then keyword date in parentheses. And inside that date is where we put our column reference. So the next input is the format, or the, I'm sorry, the time zone. So that's just going to be GMT for Greenwich Mean Time. It's just a required syntax there. And then the final input is the format we want it in, which is two digit month, two digit day, four digit year. And that casing matters there for the months, so make sure that's uppercase. So we're going to copy this and do a similar thing for the time because we need to format the time as well. So we're going to change keyword date here to keyword time. Our time is right after the date column wise. So that's going to be column five for here. Instead of Greenwich Mean Time, we're going to input session and then we want to get script time zone. So now the final thing we want to do is format the time. So we have H colon and then MM. So that's hours, minutes, and then space. And I'm going to add an A on the end of that. That is designation for AM, PM. So <clears throat> Don't forget to add a semicolon after the end of this because what we did is we referenced our template variable and then chained these four replace methods onto that template variable. So now we need to end our line here with a semicolon. So what I want to do is <clears throat> log out this final message variable. Looks like I already had it here from previous attempts. So um, yeah, we'll log this out, make sure it looks good. So I'll hit save and run this. And um, what we should see is it's only going to reflect the last item in our list because it loops through that entire thing. So when we go to view our logs, we should see the last item here. So it says, hello, Bradley. This is a reminder that your charts 2001, two, 201 class is scheduled on May 15th at 2 p.m. So that looks good and that matches everything here. So we are golden. So now the final thing we want to do is send out our email. So make certain that when we do this, you're still inside this loop as the action we want to perform here. So make sure it's before this ending curly bracket that goes with this one here. So now what we need to do is get Gmail application. So that's Gmail app. And then we want to send 
an email with recipient, subject, and body. So our recipient is going to be the first element in each of our rows. So that is going to be our range variable again. We're going to reference our counter variable and then the first element in each row, which is column zero. Our subject is going to be equal to the same thing as we used here for the subject. So that's just going to be our range variable counter and then column three. And then for our body, that is going to be equal to our final message variable. So we'll save this. We'll go ahead and run this. And you have to authorize this again. And the reason is you're accessing the Gmail app. We were in the spreadsheet app. So now we're accessing a different application. So we have to authorize that again. So I'm going to click on the Google account we're using advanced go to that project name, scroll down and allow. So now I'm going to go to my sent items. And let's see here. Maybe it's just taking a sec to there it is. I had to refresh it. So you can see here's the message for the first item. This is a reminder that your Queries 101 class is scheduled on March 31st at 11 a.m. And you can see here is the last message to Bradley again, which we saw earlier. Well, that is all for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe.